Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is a timeless classic RPG praised for its atmosphere, music and amazing characters. But before you start, here's a guide on character creation to make your first playthrough enjoyable to its fullest. You may wonder, what exactly are clans? Clans are just bloodlines, you know, a common root shared and passed on from sire to child. Clans are a lot like character classes, and although two characters of the same clan can be totally different based on their attributes, they do have predetermined abilities and preferences. Lore-wise, clans are vampiric bloodlines. After your embrace, you become a part of a giant family of a clan that your vampire daddy or mummy was in. You develop certain features that make you similar to other people of the same clan, but you also inherit a curse. Each clan is cursed in its own way, so describing each clan, I will be also acknowledging its curse. Vampire Broadlines lets you take a personality test to determine the best clan for you, but I would do that only out of curiosity. There are some clans which are not perfectly suitable for the first playthrough. I mean, you can start playing with any clan of your choice, really, but in my opinion, some clans' features shine the most in the second, third or fourth playthrough. First of all, we have Bruja, pronounced uh, Bruja in this game and Bruja in Vampire the Masquerade Redemption, so we will stick to the first way. They're a bunch of malcontents. They get pumped up by rousing the rabble they keep around them. <laughs> like, that's hard. Nothing breeds faster than contempt, and that's what the Bruja are all about. Jealousy and contempt. The simplest explanation for this clan would be your typical default warrior class from a different RPG, but there is a lot more to it. Historically, Bruja always wanted to create a perfect society, starting from ancient Carthage and continuing on to take a vital part in the French Revolution and many other uprisings and riots we know from history books today. In modern ages, so the revolutionaries' blood still boils in Bruja's veins. A lot of them feel chained and betrayed over the years by Camarilla, the main vampiric government, and turn into anarchs. Most anarchs you will meet in the game are of this clan. Bruja. Most everyone here has Bruja blood. They are bikers, rockers, punks, always angry, always fighting. Their advantage in combat is not super good. They receive plus one bonus to brawl, making you more powerful in unarmed combat, which also results in easier feeding on your enemies. However, you will have a hard time using your unarmed skill with Bruja at the end of the game, so it's better to invest in firearms or melee skill. Your disciplines make you a pure combat-focused character, celerity being the most powerful one as it gives you the huge speed boost. Running around like Sonic with your shotgun in your hand will make beating bloodlines much easier. However, your hot blood is your curse. You receive minus two to all frenzy checks, meaning that if your humanity is low because of bad deeds you've done in the game and or you're hungry for blood, you might enter the mud or spray in which you can't control your character anymore. He just runs wildly on the streets, drinking everyone on the way dry. Not the best thing to happen, so if you play as Bruja, try to keep your humanity high. If you want to crush your enemies with bare hands, Gangrel is the best pick. Well, they fancy themselves loners and drifters running around the countryside and barking at the moon. <laughs> it's all just an act. Gangrel can walk upright. They just choose not to. Gangrels are loners, nature lovers, vampires that communicate with animals better than with other vampires and usually stay away from the cities. You can use animal spirits in battle with discipline called animalism and change your farm into a deadly monster with protein. Gangrel's claws make the game a whole lot easier, but their curse makes them closer to the beast within them, so you might lose control of your character more often. However, your penalty on frenzy checks is smaller than Bruja's, and going into frenzy is not entirely bad in this case. Frenzied Gangrel in protean form is an unstoppable killing machine, destroying most enemies in the game with ease. In my opinion, if you want to play as an evil character who doesn't care about humanity, Gangrel would be your best pick. As much as you can be a good and tamed vampire of this clan, you won't really explore its full potential without using frenzy for your own benefit. Malkavians are, uh, interesting. There's something to them. Learning to sort the wisdom from the bullshit can be some work, and uh, not all of them are worth listening to, but uh, they're all good fun, if you ask me. Possibly the most famous Bloodlines clan among its players, Malkavians are an absolute treat. Their disciplines make them insanely powerful and versatile for a low price that most people consider their greatest advantage. 
You see, your curses, you're absolutely insane. What? Oh my, a Malkavian. This ought to be absolutely delicious. Two minds as crazy as ours, and who knows just what might happen. Dialogue options make no sense unless you decipher them from rumblings of a madman. Instead of taking traditional route to finish quests, you can convince people that you are a turtle, that they are in love with a moon, or that they are eating maggots. Oh, and you can talk to traffic signs and uh, other things. I won't spoil it too much. Malkavians are the pinnacle of this game's design, and their playthrough should be savored like the best dish. As much as you will be tempted to, please consider not to pick them for your first playthrough. You see, Malkavian Madness has its prophetic side, and your little vampire will know tons of things before you will even realize what they are about. In short, some dialogue options will blatantly spoil you the game. Same happens with little voices in your head. If you play the game loud enough, you will hear whispers commenting on dialogues you're participating in. I understand you might want to know who's the liar before the gamer unravels it, but believe me, you will fully appreciate these little tidbits once you beat the game once. The Nosferatu are damn good at what we do. No one even argues that. If you need to know, if you want it found, you come to us. We're indispensable. Not a bad place to be in the afterlife. Nosferatu is another clan, after Malkavian, that changes the gameplay a lot. You see, your curse is quite uh, visible. Very, very much visible. You're ugly and scary like a monster from under the bed, and every single character you meet in the game will somehow acknowledge this. Officially, Nosferatu can't walk on the streets and should use sewers to avoid the violation of Masquerade. Fortunately, sneaking in Bloodlines is quite easy, and I managed to finish a Nosferatu playthrough while mostly walking under the moon. Your appearance makes it impossible to use the best source of blood in the game, that is, people temporarily falling in love with you. But rats give you way more blood than other clans get from them, so if you are in need of a drink, just go down the sewers. Surprisingly, Nosferatu can easily finish all side quests of the game, and on top of that, they get additional content. If you are a good Nosferatu to your Nosferatu brethren, you might get a sweet Nosferatu creep. In general, not sure if it's the best pick for a first playthrough, but playing a Nosferatu is way more enjoyable than it sounds. <laughs> I don't rub elbows with the pretty bloodsuckers much. But I've seen them work people like puppeteers, and that's admirable. Now, if only they'd get off their slimy asses and put their talent to some use besides feeding their egos. Periodors are absolute opposites of Nosferatus, and they don't like each other that much as well. Imagine Twilight vampires, but actually cool and just using their naive little Bellas as an everyday source of blood. Handsome guys, beautiful chicks exploring the dance floor for their next prey. Here's your typical in-game Toriador. In pen and paper game, their fondness of beauty is actually their curse. Toriador can fall in love with the sight of dawn and slowly turn into ash while contemplating the rising sun. In game, dawn never comes, so you don't have to worry about it. Your curse in Bloodlines is based on humanity. Every time a regular clan loses humanity point, you lose two. On the other hand, gaining them is also doubled. Remember that Toriadors are meant to be played with high humanity stats, so it might not be a great idea to be evil when you choose this clan. Invest in appearance, subterfuge, persuasion, playing a sweet talker is super enjoyable and makes the game a whole lot easier. Also, your combat disciplines work really well with firearms, so consider guns your weapons of choice. Mages. I don't have any reason to trust them. They're creepy and I think they like it that way. But to be honest, I don't hear much about the Tremere. There's a few in LA, but all in all, there's not that many of them. As for Tremere, well, I might be biased, but it's one of my favorite clans in the game, and I believe they might be the best clan for your first playthrough, if you are not crazy about any of those I mentioned before. No one really trusts your tiny Tremere, and they have solid reasons not to. Historically, Tremere's were humans who stole the gift of vampirism from one of the elders by drinking his blood, and on top of that, they got heavily involved in the use of blood magic. Modern Tremere's are powerful blood mages, living very closely with others of their clan, putting loyalty to your regent on top of loyalty to Camarilla or any other vampiric organization. As a Tremere in Bloodlines, you will eventually meet your regent, and you can score possibly the coolest creep in the game if you act well in his presence. Additionally, Thaumaturgy, your blood magic discipline, is the most OP discipline in the whole game, stealing blood from people in a distance or boiling blood within their veins, making them explode like fireworks on New Year's Eve. 
Just uh, don't use it in public. You might break some laws if you do. I didn't mention a curse, but I'm not really sure if Tremere's disadvantage in the game can be considered a curse. They can't raise their physical attributes higher than 4, so you can't make your little mage nerd too strong, but you won't even notice that casting deadly spells on the go. Last but not least, we have Ventru. Well, they get a bad rap if you ask me. Everyone likes to take shots at the man in charge, but when it comes to getting the job done, the Ventru know how to step up. They can take the heat. Blue bloods, politicians, royalty. Ventru are posh on one side, but creepily manipulative and dominating on the other. The second side results with one of the funniest advantages in the game. You can use your discipline dominate in dialogues, forcing people to do things against their will. The first side though, well, let's say being posh is a curse, and it's one of the worst curses in the whole game. You see, your little Ventru vampire has a very specific taste. Rats are a no-no, bum necks or cheap prostitutes are too much for your taste buds. After drinking bad blood you have a chance to vomit, losing more and more blood as the effect. You will have to rely on blood bank for some parts of the game and high social skills will help you a lot. Subterfuge and nice looks will score you enough blood dolls to not worry about your drinks in the city. Your disciplines work well with melee, and dominate is an insanely good discipline to use against humans in combat while not going out of stealth. You can force people to commit suicide on the spot, which is highly against the pen and paper rules of the game, but let's not worry about it. That's all about playable clans in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I hope this guide was helpful for you. Take care, and don't get lost in the night.